What fetish is more common than people think? Breeding kink Encountered it well and otherwise, you'd think millennials who indulge in casual sex would try to avoid it, but the idea of doing it raw and risking pregnancy is often floated when sexting and not gonna lie, sometimes it can be enticing. This is always so shocking to people, and I kinda get why most people would hear rape kink and think rape rape, struggling, crying and screaming, there are plenty of people who are into that, but a lot of people are just into the super tame terrible acting rape, aka whoops I didn't wear panties today and I'm also stuck in this wall. Yeah, I met this girl at a party like two months back, and we were kinda getting it on. We rushed off to the toilet to be more intimate and somehow we ended up on our fetishes and I told her that I like anal but I'm fine with just regular sex, but she's like no, could you rape me on this toilet, aunt? I was out of there, like I get that she might like that, but we were in someone else's apartment, we can't role play a rape at a party on the toilet in with like 20 people in the rest of the apartment, thank god and taught with the big brain that time. I've attempted suicide twice. I was tempted to reach out to people for help, reassurance but, as selfish as it is, I didn't want to have to notify them. I wanted them to care enough to notice my behavior and ask. I think this is quite a common mentality to have. So, when the people close to you seem down or are exhibiting other symptoms of being heavily depressed, weight gain, weight loss, insomnia, extensive lethargy, sleeping far too much, unusually happy or manic behavior, ask. Most people, even if that's not how they're feeling, will greatly appreciate someone checking in on them. If they are feeling like that, tell them that you care about them, maybe tell them about the things you value in them most, and ask what you can do to try and make things easier. Putting it all like that makes it sound almost bratty. I suppose it can be selfish in its own way. Unfortunately I don't know how to describe how it feels in words. Won't specifically comment on suicidal thoughts situations, but depression in general. As a base, be there, but don't expect anything. They might not text, call back, or even read your text. Agree to any activity or show up when agreed. Do not take this personally. I think calling is a good thing, even if it's just a small talk. As to the frequency and intensity, it probably depends on the other person, but I'd say calling daily is fine. If they're a really close friend, and just chat for a bit, you won't be able to solve their problem. I think most of what counts is to remind them that there's someone out there who is thinking of them and cares about them. You can ask them out for an activity, like, going for a walk, and, depending on the person, be at least a little persistent about it. Sometimes people need that little extra push, but doing so lightheartedly without pressuring them. They should seek professional help and if they don't, you may offer to help them look for a therapist or help them set up a call. I spent most of yesterday morning on a suicide hotline, with the exception of maybe two people. Those who know me would be surprised by that, and many would dismiss it, based on my long-time struggles. Acknowledge their pain, and that it is real and valid. Don't tell them you're lucky, you have underscore, don't, for the love of fuck, tell them that kids with cancer slash pox slash trans youth, you or someone you know have it worse or remind them of their privileges. Don't make references elsewhere about how selfish or self-centered they are for their mental health struggles. Ask them what they need, right now, and be prepared to give that to them. It might be a hug, just time to vent, assurance that you're not going to stop caring about them, or quiet company and distractions so we don't feel alone in our heads. Common interests? Like to go out and have a beer. Shoot some pool together? Go bowling? Just go with that and invite them to do those things. Even go as far as no? Come on man. We used to have so much fun, nobody else else wants to go with me. Yes, making it about you and taking the spotlight off of them is a good thing. It doesn't matter what brought you together in the first place, it could be anything from quantum mechanics discussions to a love for beer. 
just bring them back to those better days. Be a reminder of what life was when they weren't feeling so bad. Don't force them to get into the reasons, they'll bring it out when ready. Maybe hint around about how you see they've been having a rough patch. That's when you get to be that person they get deep with. Be prepared to set boundaries and even walk away if it's too much. Most of us don't want to be burdens. No, you don't have to take middle of the night phone calls or spend all week with them. It's okay to say I love you and want to help, but I can't do the heavy lifting on this one. Can I call someone for you? Want me to see if friend or family member can come over? It's even okay to call for outside help from a crisis center or ask them if they want to go to the hospital. Remind them of the things you value about them. Let them know the ways in which your world is better because they are in it. Don't guilt them. I would be heartbroken if you weren't here. But remind them of how they matter to you. I've always been grateful for your friendship. Remember that time we went to the zoo? That's one of my happiest experiences with you. You've given so much. Remember this is an ongoing struggle? One step forward and two steps back. For a lot of us, you can't magically fix us. There are no magical fixes, otherwise, we'd have already fixed things. Thank you. Even if we forget to say it in the moment, we're so grateful that you gave a shit and took time. Thank you. In contradiction to many of the armchair psychologists here, just don't be a pain in the ass about it. As someone who's been there, in fact, spent months of this year crying daily, being someone who nags them to get help or keeps going on about how there for you you are, and constantly wants them to confront things, it can easily make you a pain in the ass that's just resented. It's about as useful as people who are always posting suicide hotline numbers. If you really want to do it, you're not calling someone to talk you out of it. I really suggest just sticking with being the kind of friend that made you friends in the first place. Most people don't become friends because they meet someone and started having deep personal conversations about their problems. They become friends because of the enjoyable good times they've spent together. Common interests? Like to go out and have a beer, shoot some pool together, go bowling, just go with that and invite them to do those things. Even go as far as no. Come on man. We used to have so much fun. Nobody else else wants to go with me. Yes, making it about you and taking the spotlight off of them is a good thing. It doesn't matter what brought you together in the first place. It could be anything from quantum mechanics discussions to a love for beer. Just bring them back to those better days. Be a reminder of what life was when they weren't feeling so bad. Don't force them to get into the reasons. They'll bring it out when ready. Maybe hint around about how you see they've been having a rough patch. That's when you get to be that person they get deep with. Two of my best friends tried to commit suicide. Please listen closely. I literally beg you. The other comments cover the basics. I'm gonna give the unusual advice that I wish I had been told. At some point, you need to let go emotionally. You cannot be someone's full-time ventilator. You will crumble. Even if I'm scared they will die. Even if you're scared they will die. But they matter more. Don't. Do. It. Alone. Get them help. Because if you're saving a drowning person, as strong as you are, they will try to drown you too in their panic. Either that or the current will tire you out and you will sink. You will both drown. The first time I missed the signs until it was too late and got their call from the hospital. We were only 16. It'll never happen again. I told myself, next time, I'll stop it, no matter what it takes. The next time, I was 18. I held to my word. I went in the trenches and tried to pull them out before it was too late. A month passed. Two, three, six. I still suffer from complex post-traumatic stress disorder, a panic disorder, and post-traumatic seizures. I might be on education for the rest of my life because of the trauma I suffered keeping a suicidal person alive. And in the end, they turned against me when I threatened to call them an ambulance, because I was being selfish, and for a while I believed it. TL semicolon doctor, whatever you do, no matter who it is, 
be a helper, not a hero. Heroes don't exist, draw boundaries or pay the price, and the price is heavier than you might think. You are worth saving too. First of all, I think it's important to keep in mind that it's not your job to cure them. Take that burden off your shoulders, and focus on being there as a friend. It will help both of you in the long run. As the saying goes don't set yourself on fire to keep others warm. Second, if they decide to open up to you, listen and acknowledge. I know we all have an urge to help, and it's easy to throw out quick fixes like have you tried X, but a lot of the time validation can be more helpful. Third, don't give up on them. Depression can last a long time. Keep inviting them to stuff even if they decline slash don't answer. Bail again and gain. It's very easy to stop inviting someone when they don't show interest, but in the long run it could be very helpful in their recovery. Best of luck to you and your friend. These things are hard. Hope you can work through it. Acknowledge the fact that they're depressed. Tell them that you're there for them if they feel like going out again. Offer help with practical stuff if they need any. Don't force them to do fun things. Don't tell them to cheer up. Only worry when they appear suddenly at peace with the world and depression seems totally gone. It's not uncommon for suicidal people to have a short tranquil phase when they have decided to end it all and are at peace. Pay off. I have friends that have taken their own lives. The amount of suffering that they go through is intense, and it might be more than you can handle. It's okay if you need space now and then. It takes a lot of emotional labor to help someone in that position. Recognize your own efforts as you make them because your friend may be unable to appreciate it in the moment. It's not their fault. Depression can be straight up blinding. It's important to keep in mind that their actions aren't your fault, and not to blame yourself if they get angry or frustrated with your help. They probably don't want to feel that way either. Thank you for caring. I was in this position a while ago, had the plan, the looping thoughts that it was the only way to end the pain I was feeling. I knew there was something not right with me, so I found a good therapist which gave me someone to talk to. As problems this deep pushed away anyone who tried to help me because they didn't have the right words or capacity to deal with it. A year later I'm doing much better, professional help is the way to go. People who are depressed often become silent. They'll stop texting, calling, and using social media. That's when you need to reach out and pull them back into your circle and hug them tighter. There's usually a reason why. Finding out may be tough, but you might just save a life if you sit down and listen to them. Edit, I appreciate all your responses and awards. Great dialogue going on here. I want to add approaching a friend who's a bit isolated. Be gentle, non-judgmental, and ready to listen without commenting unless they ask. Here's an example. Hey man, I care about you a lot. You know that right? I'm worried you might be sad and going through this on your own. Do you want to talk about what's going on? If not that's totally cool, let's do something fun instead. If so, gently ask about depression. Ask sick e cap, sleep, loss of interest, guilt, energy, concentration, pleasure, and if they are depressed, encourage them to see a doctor race up, and after that, be the best friend you are to them, or best neighbor you can be to them, or best classmate, whatever role you play in their life. So, 8 years ago, my best friend of 18 years committed suicide. I never noticed anything was wrong until the day I found out he had passed. After that, hindsight was 2020, and I couldn't believe I never noticed all the hints that were there all along. I spent a long time blaming myself. Dot, 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 I notice them now. Why the hell didn't I notice them before? But, at the end, there was nothing I could do about it anymore. My friend was gone. So, instead, once I quit blaming myself, I made a vow. From then on, I wouldn't let it happen again. Anytime somebody I knew was showing any of the signs I had come to recognize, 
I reached out to them, even if it was somebody I didn't know super well. I've now done it three times. Dot 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 once for a former co-worker who had been laid off, once with the university classmate who was having trouble in her marriage, and once with a high school classmate who I noticed posting some very strange things on Facebook. Hadn't spoken to him in years. But we knew each other and he knew my friend who had died. Here's the advice I would give. Right off the top, most important, you gotta let them know you see them struggling and that you are on their side. Don't do it in a confrontational way. It can start with something as simple as is everything alright? Make sure they know you're not trying to intrude and insert yourself, but that you want to help. My go-to line has always been if you don't want to talk about it, you can tell me to butt out, but I wanted to make sure everything's okay. And then if they tell you to butt out, you damn well butt out, but end it with if you ever need to talk to somebody, just know I'm always here. 2. Dot, if they do open up to you, just listen to them. Don't try to resolve their issues for them because, unless you're a trained psychologist, you're not equipped to do that. If they tell you, for example, that their girlfriend broke up with them, Say that's terrible, tell me what happened, not that's terrible, what can I do to help? In certain cases, people just need to vent all their frustrations and they need a person who is just going to listen to them, not make all their shit go away, but listen and truly feel sympathetic to them. Just knowing somebody cares enough to actually listen to you is a very reassuring thing. 3. If they start telling you things that are causing their depression, under absolutely no circumstances whatsoever should you tell another living soul about it, even if the person that is causing them to have suicidal thoughts is somebody you know, even if you think that person would be reasonable about it, even if you think you can resolve the issue by telling somebody else, don't do it, they opened up to you and only you, if they wanted somebody else to know they would have told them. 4. Encourage them to get some help if at all possible. One of the biggest issues is that they think getting help makes them weak. The stigma is starting to lift, but it is definitely still there. If you think they're a very serious threat to themselves, then try everything you can to break down that stigma and convince them to get some help. Those are my four points. I hope they are helpful. These are the steps I have followed and I like to think I've been somewhat successful to varying degrees over the past 8 years. I know it can seem daunting to put yourself out and offer to help your friend in need, but I promise you that it's worth it and a lot better than the alternative. Also, make sure to look after yourself in this process. Being there for a depressed and or suicidal person is not easy. Once they start opening up, you might hear some things that are very dark and that you may not have wanted to hear, and hearing those things can bring some darkness into your own life too. So always make sure you are looking after yourself too. If you need any other advice or want help writing a message or something to your friend, you can always DM me. I'm always happy to help, even if it's a complete stranger. If you feel comfortable doing so, ask them more questions about it. It's especially important to ask if they have a plan, or means to fulfill their plan, as these can be signs that they're considering attempting soon. Here's a good article summarizing some advice, and linking to some really great resources, https colon slash slash www.npr.org slash section slash health shots slash 2019 slash 04 slash 20 slash 707868610 slash how to help someone at risk of suicide you should definitely consult the experts on this one i sincerely hope your friend pulls through they're lucky to have a friend like you in their life Psych here. These are some of the things my clients have found most helpful. Listening without judgment or giving advice. This above all, reassuring them that you are there for them. Reaching out and staying in touch, as they might not be able to reach out to you, when and if they're ready. Suggesting, gently, you do a, simple, easy, activity you enjoy together. Internally, value their company, existence, 
they probably can't see any value in themselves in their current space.